Hello and welcome to today's Confessions of a Global Changemaker show. You know I only ever bring you absolutely shit-hot, awesome people from all around the world, right? Well, today is no exception. This amazing lady who you see sat in front of you, uh, is she's a motivational speaker. She's the founder of Girls Chronically Rock. Um, it says here, and the state's Massachusetts... Yes, good that you've given me this challenge to say a long word at the beginning of the show. <laughs> State Ambassador for the Muscular Dystrophy Association at <laughs> girlschronicallyrock.com is an amazing brand and it offers inspired fashion celebrating muscular dystrophy and other chronic illnesses. I'm looking forward to really getting into the amazing uh, story, the backstory behind this Girls Chronically Rock brand that you've built, all the incredible stuff that you're doing, and really getting behind the journey that you've had on, on this this journey where yeah. you're where you are now. But how did you get there? And what are some of the obstacles and challenges that you face that you think our viewers and listeners can learn from on their journey? So Keisha, welcome to the Change Maker Show. Hi, well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I'm, I'm very excited. Now let's get stuck straight in because I, I like to get to the heart of, of uh, <laughs> you know, what, what it is that you've really come through to get here. What would you say is one of the hardest things you've been through on your business journey? I'm um, sure. Well, of course, um, balancing, you know, living with muscular dystrophy, which is a chronic illness slash disability it progresses over the years, and then also focusing on my business. So, of course, I'm trying to juggle everything. I don't have a team of people behind me. This is solely me. I'm doing everything on my own, packaging the orders, doing the designs, maintaining my website and responding to emails. So it is a lot. So sometimes I do have to remember to pat myself on the back and say, you got this, you know, sometimes when I have my down days. I would say so, for sure. How does muscular dystrophy really impact on you running a business at the same time as having that? I'm sure. So living with muscular dystrophy, it definitely does progress over time. I was diagnosed with this in 2010. So it definitely has progressed over time, but it's just kind of more one of those things you don't have no control over your body. When I wake up some mornings, I don't know what the body's going to do, if I'm going to possibly lose my balance and possibly have a fall, which is, you know, very difficult and hard because once I fall, I'm pretty much like a dead weight and I can't get myself back up. So sometimes the body I feel may super tired where I'm like, I don't even feel I can get out the bed. You know, sometimes the body like aches. So it's like, sometimes it's like, I never know what the body's going to do. All I can do is take it day by day and step by step. Wow. Do, do you feel, because you're clearly a, a tremendously creative person. Do you ever feel like, you know, you're this amazing brain um, in a body that's not able to serve as fast as you want to go? Does it ever frustrate you that you can't Oh, yes. Faster? Of course. Of course it frustrates me because here I am. I was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy while I was in graduate school. So I had, I was able-bodied prior to this. You know, I was able to drive, able to walk up five flights of stairs without a problem, playing softball. So it's like, boom. And then here it comes, this muscular dystrophy. So wow. of course, sometimes I do look back and it's like a term I like to use it's like kind of grieving the person I once was, if that makes sense. Right, right. Yeah. I am um, my aunt, my granddad's sister. Is, so I was very young when she died. I think I was probably about eleven when she died. But she she was blind and deaf, but she had full sight and full hearing until she was. I think she was she she was about eleven or twelve. I think uh -huh. she got like measles or something. Well, back then they didn't have. Thank goodness we have the ability to get over these things pretty quickly. But back then, um, she went blind and deaf. So she knew what life was like. It wasn't like she was born that way. And right. I think she knew as well, you know, when you've had this life where you haven't had this uh, disease um, or blindness or deafness, whatever it is, and you've had this life up to that point, I guess it must be the same for even people with, you know, have ha had a stroke or have come through heart yeah. disease or something, and then you're taking medication for the rest of your life and you just can't do things the same way anymore. Exactly. Anymore. It's like you never know what's going on in your body, as I realized all these years. It's like, boom, you can just wake up and you're totally a different person than just less than 24 hours ago. It's like, whoa. Wow. 
I mean, were there any telltale signs? Is it what brings this on? How can you go from being a completely perfectly healthy woman living this amazing full life to all of a sudden, bam, you know, like yeah. your body is a place you don't recognize anymore? It's definitely crazy. Um, the sim symptoms I started noticing was that I would honestly just be walking normally and my leg would kind of just give out on me and I would fall to the floor and it would be like a dead weight. Like I wasn't able to just boom, get myself back up. And it was like hard for say my mom and sister to help me to get up. It was like kind of like a dead weight. Like I needed like a nice strong person like to lift me up. So I just kind of brushed it off. It, the falls kept happening. And I just thought, oh, maybe I need to lose some weight. No big deal brushing it off. But my mom was like, let's go see an orthopedic. I think something's not right. So we go see an orthopedic at Tufts Medical Hospital out here in Boston, Mass. And I always remember regular examination. I'm lying down in the bed. Doctors come in. They asked me to raise my right leg right leg wouldn't even go like that far off the bed like and that was the first time I noticed it same thing with the left leg so then they both just kind of looked at each other puzzled like I think maybe you need to see a neurologist something's more like neuromuscular so I'm still like la-di-da who cares you know still not really thinking anything of it but I'm thinking something's up so then that's when we go to the neurologist and I get several testings done we go straight to the point EMG EKG blood work, muscle biopsy, which was the most interesting where they took the piece of muscle from out of my right leg. And I was awake for that. So I was able to see that they pretty much just numbed, you know, the part around my leg. So that was interesting. And then from that muscle biopsy, that's when they were able to determine that I have muscular dystrophy. And to hear that diagnosis, was it like, no, you, you, that's someone else. <laughs> you must be. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. The day she called me, I'm like, like, first of all, I'm like, I never heard of that. Nobody in my family seems to have it. And then of course, you know, the first thing we do is we sometimes go to Google and I start researching it. And then it's saying how it affects people from childhood birth. It affects young boys and how, you know, it does progress over time. And then I'm reading that. I'm like, well, I'm not a boy. I'm like, I didn't have this at birth. Like I was fine up until now. But then I started researching that so, there's so many different types of muscular dystrophy, Duchenne, spinal muscular atrophy, and my type is called limb girdle muscular dystrophy. But yeah, when I got that phone call, I'm like, she had to be calling the wrong person. Like I honestly thought that for a while, even going to the doc follow-up appointments, you know, for her to discuss with me like different things, I'm just like was thinking she was going to say, Keisha, you know, we got back your test results, but it wasn't muscular dystrophy. Like you're all set. It wasn't that. Like I just kept thinking that's what she was going to say, but that wasn't the case. It's a diagnosis that has gone on to lead you in to a whole kind of life purpose career, <laughs> bringing mm. those things together. Because do you do you think you would be doing what you're doing now if you hadn't have had that diagnosis? Um, I definitely always wanted to be an entrepreneur slash business owner. And I love fashion because I got my undergraduate degree in fashion design and merchandising. So I knew I always wanted to be something in the fashion field. So of course, after being diagnosed, that put a huge damper on things because I'm just like, you know, what about my dreams and the things that I had for wishing and I wanted to do? And mm -hmm. I was in denial for, you know, quite some time. It took some time getting used to here. I was doing merchandising, working at local department stores such as Macy's, Target, Nordstrom's and my disease started to progress and I wasn't telling anybody what was going on going on job interviews so when I started to walk with a cane I would tell them like I sprayed my ankle while I was in a car accident so what I said was, everything what, but what muscular was, dystrophy what was, from, what was it that was stopping you from telling them the truth I think because if I said it out loud it made it like real I think uh, now looking back it's like I said everything it's like saying I was in a car accident or sprayed my ankle sounded better it was like kind of on a whatever honestly came to mind that day as I walked in the door. I was like, oh, yeah, I sprained my ankle. But knowing like I didn't, I have muscular dystrophy and it's here to stay. So th did you have some kind of um, coming out moment when you thought, OK, enough's enough. I have to be honest with the world about this. Yeah, it definitely took some time. Like I tell people, I feel like I just came out of denial, honestly, the other day. It was like one day when I started writing my blog and my friend was like, oh, why don't you start writing a blog, expressing your story and sharing your thoughts? And again, when he said that, I'm like, why would I write a blog about something I don't have? Like, that's how my mind was so gone. Wow. So then I just opened my laptop one day and started typing out 
my symptoms, how I was repeatedly falling, going to the doctor's appointment. And it took that moment as I started typing and saying it out loud. Wow, I have muscular dystrophy. It's like it took for me to start writing. Never mind what the doctors were saying. <laughs> you know, like I'm thinking they had it all wrong. So as I'm typing it, I'm like, I have muscular dystrophy. So that kind of opened the door a little bit, not 100%, but a little crack. You know what I mean? Just a little crack in the door. So, and I'm a true believer. I start to realize that things sometimes happen for a reason. And then that was my way to kind of then start my Girls Chronically Rock brand. And how long ago was that? Um, that I started called Girls Chronically Rock. That was in mm -hmm. 2017. So you have this idea of bringing your, what you had studied, what you were passionate about together with this diagnosis that you've had, this, okay, I've got, it's time I come out about this. And you've been able to bring those two worlds together. What was the, the, the kind of the tipping point of you building a whole brand around it? Because you've literally gone from totally denying that it even exists, <laughs> that it even happens in your world to, to having it in the name of your whole brand. Yeah, it's, it was a lot. Like, I'm still sometimes surprised and shocked at myself today, you know, but as I mentioned, I'm a true believer in things happen for a reason. I always had a passion to own my own business, had a passion for fashion. So I thought, why not maybe incorporate, you know, a fashion line to express my journey and feelings through my line? So I thought I'm a huge fan of graphic t-shirts, which I love, like different inspirational quotes and things like that. I love cutting up t-shirts, bleaching them. So I thought for the name, I knew I wanted something with the word chronic in it for chronic illnesses. So I honestly was just lying in bed one night and I thought girls chronically rock. And I love the way it sounded. I love the way it flowed. And then I honestly just ran with it from there. And I thought girls chronically rock, you know, like I want people to feel empowered and motivated because I know what it's like, you know, being in now a part of this disability community, whereas before I wouldn't think about all the different struggles, like, okay, if I'm going to this location, is it wheelchair accessible? Are they going to have stairs? You know, it's like all these extra things I'm thinking about. So I just came to meet a whole much great um, of women and men in the disability community. And I'm able to share that with them because like I tell people, yes, I have the support of family and friends and that's great. I love them, but there is nothing. And I mean, nothing like talking to somebody who understands what you're dealing with on a regular basis and having the body feeling fatigued, feeling tired, you know, not be able to have like special accommodations to do this and that, not able to do the things that your friends are doing. So, you know, they get it. So I'm grateful that I'm a part of that community. Well, you've gone on to raise money for charity. You've worked with some of the biggest fashion brands. You, you've you gone on a whole life path that has, you know, like with my Auntie Maisie, my blind and deaf aunt. Yeah. And she was always invited every year to the Queen's Tea Party. She nice. Bloody air ballooning. She went, she went and did things that I... Things I haven't even done in my yeah, life right. before, <laughs> where I'm fully bodied and capable and good for her. Things. And you know, sometimes, well, in many times actually, I think that when we're handed something like that, you know, we have a choice, don't we? We can see it as a curse or we can see it as a gift. Yes, and she saw hers as a gift, and you have turned yours into a gift for yeah. many other people so you start this fashion brand what were some of the biggest hurdles you came up against regardless of health but it, from a business perspective you start this fashion brand which is consumer led so it's not business to business you're going business to consumer and I'm sure you've done some deals where you've gone business to business to, to consumer where they're selling your brand as well or maybe that's in the horizon if you have yes in the horizon <laughs> so so tell us about some of the hurdles that you came up against, that you experienced as a new business, you know, wide eyed and bushy tailed and <laughs> rose tinted glasses. Business is amazing. It's going to be yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, I was still always nervous just opening a business because you're like, are people going to like it? Are people going to get the vision? Are they going to like my styles? Because, yes, I know my styles. It's different from others and same as vice versa. So I'm like, are people going to understand my message? This is not just going to be about clothing, but a movement. So, of course, as I started creating these designs and sayings on the T-shirt, you know, I noticed it definitely takes time because then, you know, I would post it. I'm like, oh, my God, is someone going to like it? Am I going to get a sale? 
But I love now on social media, especially Instagram, how you can ask questions. Like sometimes if I'm unsure of a design, I would may say, what do you think of this? Yay or nay? So I kind of like that feedback from the support because I'm like, okay, so if I get 100% yes, then I would post this on the website. But, you know, of course, it's always struggles because you're like, oh, my God, is someone going to like it? You know, I would love to get my um, merchandise into stores. And that's something I'm still dealing with right now of sending my pitches and different things to different magazines, to different stores such as Target and Macy's. And yes, I know during this pandemic right now, a lot of stores are closing. They are so, but you know, I'm just hoping that maybe some of them will still give me a chance because I know they'll still be selling online. But yeah, that's like one of the things I struggle with right now. I I think that there's a lot of um, fashion brands, definitely, that they are utilizing the power of the social networks way more than they're even using the power of their websites now. You know, especially for creative entrepreneurs like yourself, Instagram must be your best friend, surely. And Pinterest, even, you know, that these are creative networks that that are like perfect for someone like you to yeah. create a, 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 an identity and TikTok I would imagine as well getting people wearing yeah. fashion brands and doing <laughs> little dances and things um you know TikTok I think this is so hilarious <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I mean what a, a, a great adventure you are on Uh, hello hello. great to see you sammy as well as fabulous keisha (laughs) do you know know, um heather pierce campbell already um maybe oh Oh, yes you know i didn't even notice okay i'm like oh wait where are the comments (laughs) (laughs) see you here heather long time no see so like what happened next so you launch your brand um it, was it or do you ever find there's a point you know when you're you have this kind of um this pride in your work so much that you think oh you know will people like it when you approach somebody like a fashion house or a famous design label um you know that the stores that you really want to get into is that, like how do you prepare yourself to be resilient for the no you know do you ever think uh, or do you even think about a no do you do you think you know, this is a given. This is a this is a done thing. Like, what's your strategy for managing your mental health around getting through the door to to these big places? <laughs> it's definitely a lot. As you know, as I'm sending the email, preparing it, I'm just like, but it, I, it feels good as I send that email. Like, I've been productive, and I'm not going to stop. And I always make sure I write follow up. You know, in my calendar, it's like, okay, I reached out to say TJ X Corporation today. I'm going to follow back up in like probably two weeks or so. And I'm just going to continue to, you know, share my story and hopefully they realize it. But yes, sometimes it is a damper, you know, and there have been times there have been some stores I've reached out to where I honestly thought like they would have loved it because I kind of feel like my style and my designs went with their, you know, fashion and their online store and boutique store. So I was like, that was one time I'm like, what? You know, like, why wouldn't you want to collaborate with me? Like, I was just like hurt by that. But, you know, I'm just continuing to and I do appreciate the people that do write back like, hey, I love what you're doing. I love your story. But, you know, unfortunately, we don't have the space for that right now. And sometimes even that makes me feel good because it's like they read it. They paid attention. Right. Those, those words like go meaningful to me. Yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Even if it's a no, at least it comes with some integrity. Behind yes, it. definitely. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes a big difference. It does. <laughs> What's the journey for you now then? So you've built your business to where you are. Talk about, tell us about your business, where it is now. So are you online? How do we find you? How do we go and access what you're selling? Sure, sure. definitely go check out on my website, girlschronicallyrock.com. You can also follow me on um, Instagram, girlschronically underscore rock. And I am also on Facebook, Girls Chronically Rock and Keisha Graves. So please feel free. You can send me a message, any questions. I always respond. But yeah, definitely go check out on my website, girlschronicallyrock.com. I have some new merchandise that came in. Um, I have some new ones that say Black Disabled Lives Matter, um, Black Lives Matter, Phenomenally Black. So I just have all these different things. And then, of course, other inspirational quotes on other T-shirts as well. So definitely go check it out. Well, let's go check it out right now. I'm going to share the screen. Let's go check it out. (laughs) <laughs> okay so um 
so let's take a look at your website now so when we come here i'll just click off that for a minute so um so you've got i mean you you've got lots and lots of different um let's have a look at the collections that you've got on here because i love the fact that you know that this is physical i love a physical tangible brand yes <laughs> yes thank you, you know, like, you know when we sell services that's one thing but as soon as we turn that into a product there's something physical about it isn't it it makes the business feel a bit more right yeah, exactly <laughs> so you design these yourself and yes like, i do work with a graphic designer and so do you have a fulfillment company that deals with this do you print all of these yourself um, like, no i do have a t-shirt company Sure. Right. So I work with a graphic designer where if I come up with a unique design or saying, I will talk to her about that and say, hey, I would love for it to say this and I want these colors. And, you know, we would kind of go through different drafts and come back and forth. And then I do have a T-shirt company I work with here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where I live. And then I would send her like the logo and say, hey, I would like to get a bundle of these, you know, T-shirts. Or if, you know, if I sometimes I do it by order, like if a customer place order, then I would place an order with the t-shirt company. But I honestly would love my goal is to honestly be able to print my t-shirts from in my own, own apartment. So I'm looking into investing in one of those t-shirt printing machines. I think that'll be, and save me money. <laughs> well, yeah, well it will, but it will take you time. So um, having somebody else start working for you at that point, it will be a good uh, a good opportunity for you as well. Yeah. I love how you've kind of, you've stepped into um, server demand you know, you've even got your face masks on here. As well. <laughs> yes, yep. I uh -huh. um, used some of those for my um inventory I had here in stock because, of course, when the pandemic first started, of course, business became slow. So then I thought, why not create, you know, it seems like masks is going to be the new fashion trend, honestly, until further notice. So right. I said, why not maybe create some masks out of my inventory T-shirts that I have here? And so, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I did with those. And, yep, I love the kids line. I was oh, like, you know, we can't forget about moment. the kids mum and daughter wearing the same t-shirts so yes like one for daddy and daughter as well. <laughs> yes <It's> adorable <laughs> yeah. it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant rare disease collection let's have oh, a look yeah. oh you do the caps and everything as well yeah I think brilliant you know you've created a really good brand that that fits a youth brand and a youth kind of brand identity um at the same time as you know people of all ages being able to wear them exactly What's so yep rare disease day oh, is um really once a year on february 29th so i created this collection this year of 2020 because i thought you know what is so important and a lot of people ask me oh i noticed you like a lot of zebra so mm -hmm. zebra fix signifies um for the rare disease logo because zebra is an animal who's considered a rare animal so that kind of simplifies with the whole rare disease logo so mm -hmm. if you ever look every year they have like zebra zebra print and i've been a animal print even Love before it. my diagnosis so I thought that was a good way to incorporate, you know, my zebra print and my yeah. left print, you know, for the rare disease collection. Yeah. Amazing. I, I think oh, we've got accessories on here as well. Yes. And I recently added some throw pillows too. <laughs> well, oh gosh, there's seven pages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot here. Wow. Mm. I mean, you've, you've got some uh, amazing, amazing creativity going on in that. Yeah. <laughs> yes oh god i love that 2020 checklist <laughs> yes because i mean i definitely need it excellent mm -hmm. now you do you ever get to the you know where do your creative ideas come from do you do you just sit there and while you're you know watching tv or something oh it pops into your head and that's it action taken design bam <laughs> <laughs> pretty much it's honestly i could be here watching tv i could honestly be lying in bed about to fall asleep as I'm sleeping, I would sometimes just think of something and certain things I say, because sometimes I can say like random things when I'm talking to family and friends. And I'd be like, oh, that's that's funny. That would sound good on the T-shirt. So it honestly could be any <laughs> spare of the moment. And yes, I'm a TV fanatic. I love watching all TV. So sometimes it can. Yeah, definitely. I'm like, ah, that was funny. And then try to incorporate it in like a different saying to relate to my myself and the disability community. 
I just love this. We've got this comment thread going on here. Yeah. Where I think um, Heather says it's been a long time. It has been a long time. Um, uh, Keisha oh. Greaves, uh, Heather Pierce Campbell, you tagged the wrong Keisha Greaves. She is amazing, though. <laughs> oh, wow. Another Keisha Greaves. I like never met. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to add her. I like never met another Keisha Greaves. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. It happens on this show. Anything can happen here. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Uh, Keisha, if you had one confession, something you don't talk about very often to other people, but you know, you want to impart this confession to our viewers and listeners because you think, you know, you there are some things that you've done that you didn't have to do the hard way. And if you could to pay it forward <laughs> to other people going through this business journey. What is something you've been through that you would you would say, here's how I would go through that if I went through it differently again? Um, well, yeah, like definitely can talk about my whole diagnosis is, you know, not being upfront and honest, especially the employers, employees that I work with, you know, because working in the retail field, that is something that they should have known. You know, definitely in retail, they want you to carry boxes up and down stairs, climbing on ladders those are things I couldn't do mm. so maybe but it's like it's so hard to say like oh what I would have done because when you're at that mindset it's like here I am living a whole life before and then boom diagnosed in my early 20s what how am I supposed to deal with that you know so it's kind of like what my advice is going forward and I know it's always more easier said than done like but if you are diagnosed and dealing with something I feel for me it does help with talking to others who understand and can relate what you're dealing with because they get it. You know, yeah, you may even doctors don't get it. Yeah, they're the doctors, they might diagnose you, but they don't even get it. It's the people who's actually living with it. So I would definitely say reach out to others, you know, and especially thank God for whole social media today, this whole hashtag thing, you know, that definitely helps. Like when I first was coming on my show, I hashtag say like muscular dystrophy, hashtag chronic illness, hashtag disability awareness, and all those things just brought a whole range of so many other people. I've connected with people that have lupus, MS, Lyme disease, even diseases I never even heard of. So I would definitely say like, definitely reach out and talk to others who understand. And there's so many different support groups for everything now on Facebook. So I feel like that would be my advice. Yeah, it's, um, it's really, it, that applies to so many things, doesn't it? It's, if you're going through something, find out who's already been through it and get their advice and their feedback and find mm -hmm. out you know, what was for the sure. strategy that worked for them to get them through it? I know um dear, dear friend of mine, Pete Cohen, he's a big um, speaker and he's been on this show several times. Um, Pete's wife was diagnosed with a brain tumor or some form of cancer uh, years ago. Well, at that point, his, their life was at the highest point it could be. I think it's about six or seven years ago that this happened. And, you know, he was the resident life coach on GMTV, which is a big, like, TV network here, yeah. program in the UK. Um, so he was on that for 11 years. He had his own TV show. You know, he was, right, really, you know, going for it. His brand just exploding. Nice. And then, um, and then his wife gets, di gets this diagnosis, and he drops everything. And he he said that he was talking to a, a mentor of his about what, all, you know, all this stuff that was going on for him. And this mentor said, well, you know, well, what's she going to do when she when she comes through it? And he said, she's just been diagnosed with like the finite diagnosis. Yeah. She, she's been told she's going to die. Like, you know, that, how how can I even think about what's on exactly. the other side? He said, you need to go and find somebody who has had this type of cancer who is still alive and is, is you know, really thriving. Yeah. And he said, the best thing someone could have said to him, you know, rather than, oh, God, I'm really sorry, you know, what are you going to do to prepare for the worst? It yeah. was, who are you going to find that's already had this, that's come through it and is now living an extraordinary life? Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Journey a whole journey that, um, you know, thank goodness, you know, she's healthy and well, she's cancer free, you know, she's, they're, they're living amazing life again. And, um, you know, and Pete is, his brand's back up there again. And, you know, so after a period of time, they were away. But the point is, you find somebody else in the world 
who has achieved what you want to achieve, mm -hmm. who has come through what you've already come through, who has already, you know, learned the hard way and is able to just say, oh, yeah, you know, let's have a coffee. I'll walk you through it. You mm -hmm. do not need to go through all of this that I went through. Right. It's so important. What was like it's the true. best advice you got, like from anybody in your entire life? What's like the, the one major piece of advice that you kind of live by? Um, I would say advice, honestly, like I've taught myself, you know, to be quite honest, I really can't even say, oh, I got advice from somebody I just kind of maybe observe. And as I said, I think just me becoming a part of the whole disability community and connecting with friends, they, you know, they get it. Like if I have a fall one day and I would tell them like, oh my God, my body's aching, you know, cause they get it. And they would respond like, oh my God, I hope you feel better. Like it sucks. You know what I mean? We don't have no control over this because mm -hmm. they get it. They're living with the muscular dystrophy. They're in the power wheelchair. They know it sucks. We have to rely on personal care attendants to get a stress. So it's like, I realize just venting to them because they get it. They can't yeah, like yeah. say the wrong, like they get it. That's like really the more of the story. But as far as yeah, advice, I kind of just like learn along the way. And I'm learning things. I tell people I'm learning things every day new about living with muscular dystrophy. So right. days I wake up and I just honestly go with the flow because I don't have control over this muscular dystrophy. This has control over me. Mm, mm. that's how I look at it right mm. and you know I mean because you've got some really positive beliefs that are going on about getting through it and all these things are there any limiting beliefs that you know are like biting at your bum <laughs> 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 like beliefs like meaning like oh about my muscular dystrophy that it could possibly well, like, no, about things. what you can or can't achieve or for example you know I meet a lot of entrepreneurs that have a perfectionist belief and the perfectionist belief means that they never launch anything. Well, that's not true of you for sure, because you're yeah. just like launching it. Um, but there are some things that hold people back. Is there anything that's kind of lurking in your uh, closet of your mind that that you think, you know, actually, I'm going to really work on that this year? Um, Yeah, definitely. Um, just working on definitely trying to post more on social media. That's one thing like I need to do is trying to engage more with customers. Um, starting my podcast, I said I've been wanting to start that forever. So I'm like, I just need to start it and do it. And then, of course, like there's limitations of just being in my wheelchair that, you know, I would love to do of like just boom, leaving to go somewhere or easy to travel to get on the plane. But because now I'm in a wheelchair, that is difficult. And of course, relying on personal care attendance, that's a whole challenge in itself. Here I am. I'm a person who I am a perfectionist where I'm always a need freak. My room's never a mess. I always know where everything is, even when I lived on campus. So imagine now having to rely on PCAs. And sometimes I don't know where things are going back. Sometimes like they may put it back the wrong place. So that has me crazy just in itself. Imagine that's like a whole other topic right in itself. <laughs> Oh my God, that would drive me insane. Greg, yes. he, he does on a mission sometimes to drive me insane by putting things back where they don't go. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's, where's the whatever it is? And he'll go, oh, well, that's in that cupboard. Yeah. And where did you get it from? That cupboard. Yeah. Well, exactly. did you think it goes back in that cupboard? Yeah. Oh, it lives there now. I'm like, ah. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> my my mum's a complete neat freak. Oh, um, okay, yeah. nice. She knows where everything is. She knows where everything is. And she's got this mischievous friend who, um, you know, whenever they come round, they will on purpose, if my mum goes to the the restroom or, she, you know, she just goes to get something in another room, they'll get up and they'll just twist something slightly and then sit back down again. And she'll go, oh, <laughs> insane. <laughs> yep, she would notice that. Yep, I'm the same way. Yeah, I can relate to your mom. <laughs> uh, how many of you out there watching this just now have that same issue? <laughs> yeah, I know there's others out there. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Well, Keisha, yeah. as we come to the end of this uh, this amazing time that we're we're having together, guys and girls. If you've got any questions for Keisha, please send them in now so yeah. that I can them um of course this this interview will remain here so don't worry it's not going anywhere you can always Yay. come back uh, comment at another time if you're not able to uh, at the moment but uh, what would you what do you know for sure i love that question a dear dear friend of mine gail she she asks this question what do you know for sure 
And it just is such a great question. It's like, well, I know for sure that. What do you know for sure? I know for sure that I was here put on this earth for a reason. I know for sure that I now have my journey of being diagnosed with muscular dystrophy to share my brand, my express my feelings and what I'm going through through my line. I know that I am here because I'm going to make a difference and inspire and motivate others and build Girls Chronically Rock into an empire. Hey! <laughs> heard it here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Accountability. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I, um, you know, it just it lights me up to see somebody so lit up about their brand, about their business, about your life, what you're doing, the lives that you're helping as a result of the the designs you're creating. Obviously, you're you're making a massive difference in the world of Black Lives Matter or the chronic chronic illnesses, all kinds of issues are things that you're bringing actively into your brand and you know really standing for those things so I applaud you for that and I, I just Thank I'm gonna you. get um, Keisha's website back on the 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 uh, screen right there so for those Thank of you, you. Are listening go to girlschronicallyrock.com if yeah. you google it I'm pretty sure you're going to find Keisha's <laughs> media networks and everything. I mean, we just looked at the website. Everything is really brilliant on the website and it's all Thank you. out there beautifully. So go connect with Keisha. Um, if you're looking for somebody to interview on your show or speak on your stage, um, do connect with Keisha. She's amazing, a force to be reckoned with, a mm. global movement maker, somebody who's making enormous ripples in the world. And, and going to create many, many more waves, I'm sure. And um, thank you. It's an honor to have you on the show, Keisha. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for having me. I had a blast. You're very, very <laughs> welcome. Well, guys and girls, we are doing this show twice a week from now on. So if you missed me saying it before, we're going to be going live on a, a Tuesday and a Thursday from now on, with the exception of next week. We're going to be live Tuesday and Wednesday next week, and then we'll be into our groove and our flow every Tuesday and Thursday from then on. And if you would like your bottom in this hot seat on the... <laughs> Confessions of a Global Change Maker <laughs> show. Reach out, connect with me, drop me a message on Facebook is usually the best way to connect with me. So go find me, Sammy Blindell, on Facebook. Go connect, drop me a message, and I'd love to feature you on the show and dive into your story. Um, Keisha, thank you for being such a shining light. Thank for you us, for yourself, for all of those lives that you're you're touching in such a big way. Andy, hello, great to see you. What an inspiration. Yes, I think he's oh, summed thank you, Andy. up very, very beautifully. And it's wonderful to see so many of you. I can see somebody is a Facebook user. So hello, Facebook user. <laughs> you on screen so you can see. I do recognize that you are here, but I don't know who you are because you didn't click on the link. So I'm not quite sure what your name is. But <laughs> thank you for loving this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, so have an amazing weekend i can't believe yes that. you do have an amazing weekend and keep rocking yes thank you i appreciate that <laughs> take care Keisha. thank you bye i'm sending you big big love and i will look forward to seeing you in the group between shows take care okay thank you bye bye